little bit of a conundrum trying to get set up there, but um, we are in action for chapter three of the Chocolate Touch. So without further ado, let's get started. <clears throat> the birds were chirping in the tree outside John's window, and the sky beyond was deep blue. The bedroom door opened a few inches. Hey, Sleepy, Mrs. Midas called. Everyone else is up. John put on his bathrobe and slippers and ambled to the bathroom. His sister, Mary, was still brushing her teeth, and he had to wait until she finished. Come on, Mary, he said a little crossly. Don't take all morning. Here you are, Mary said, handing him the toothpaste tube. While Mary soaked her face, John squeezed a little of the toothpaste under his brush. The paste was pink. John made a face at his toothbrush. It didn't seem fair that he should have to brush his teeth with stuff that tasted just like his tonic. A stinky taste, he called it. John opened his mouth and pushed in the end of the toothbrush. As soon as it touched his front teeth, teeth, he noticed a delicious sweetness in his mouth. A taste of the best kind of chocolate. He pushed the brush to and fro, and the taste seemed to grow stronger. He removed the brush. The bristles were brown. What kind of toothpaste is this? John asked. Mary was drying her face. The same kind, she answered. It says on the tube, Blanco Dent, John read. It was the same kind they had always had. Why is it chocolate flavored this time, he asked. Boy, it's good. Silly, Mary said. Of course it isn't chocolate. She hung up her towel and swished out of the bathroom. John squeezed some more toothpaste onto his brush and continued to brush his teeth. Chocolate again. It was marvelous, rich, sweet, smooth chocolate. Chocolatey chocolate like the single piece of chocolate from the box the night before. There seemed to be no further need for the toothbrush, so John rinsed it and hung it up. He squeezed out another bit of toothpaste onto a fingertip this time. He put his finger in his mouth and ate the toothpaste off. When he took his finger out again, it was stained chocolate brown. John wasted no more time. He put the end of the toothpaste tube in his mouth and emptied the paste onto his tongue. It squeezed out like thick, creamy chocolate. Mary looked into the bathroom. Hey, what are you doing? She demanded. Yummy, was all John said. John and Mary were a little late getting to the dining room, and Mr. Midas was already on his way to the train when they sat down at the breakfast table. John ate up all the toothpaste, Mary told their mother. Oh, you sneak, John whispered. Well, you did, Mary reminded him, and that's a waste. Isn't it a waste, mother, to eat up all the toothpaste in one day? Mrs. Midas was serving their orange juice. Mary, really, she said. I'm sure John was only joking. He must have been pretending to eat the toothpaste. No, he wasn't, Mary insisted. I was watching, and I saw him squeeze it right into his mouth. He said it was chocolate. Oh, dear, protested Mrs. Midas. Chocolate again? Now I know it's just a joke. He just wished it were chocolate, Mary. Come now, drink up your orange juice, both of you. Your bacon and eggs will be ready in a minute. As Mrs. Midas left the room, John took up his glass of orange juice and put it to his lips. As soon as he tilted it, the liquid began to flow into his mouth. A happy look came into his eyes. Oh, yeah, that's good, he said at last, lowering the empty glass. Chocolate juice. Mary looked at John. Then she looked at her glass of orange juice. It was a bright orange color. She tasted it. It tasted like orange to her. It is not chocolate juice, she said. It's orange juice. Orange juice is good for you. Yes, John, Mrs. Midas said, hearing the last few words as she carried in the tray of bacon and eggs. You must drink your... She caught sight of John's empty glass. John, she said, you good boy. That's the first time in ages you've finished your orange juice without having to be told to. It tasted of chocolate, John explained. All right, Mrs. Midas said, very funny, but don't tease Mary too much. Remember, Mary's younger than you are. John silently picked up his fork and sliced the yolk of his fried egg. The yellow broke over the white, and he shivered, told his mother. Of course you can, Mrs. Midas said. You drank your orange juice. Try to eat your bacon and egg. John scraped up a small piece of egg and put it into his mouth. It immediately became chocolate. Chocolate, white and chocolate, white and chocolate yolk. Both lovely, lovely chocolate. Mmm, John mumbled. Chocolate egg. In almost no time, he had finished every scrap of egg on his plate. Then he tried the bacon. The bacon turned to chocolate, too. John had never before enjoyed his breakfast so much. 
after the orange juice that had turned to chocolate juice in his mouth and the fried bacon and egg that had turned to fried chocolate, he ate two slices of chocolate toast with chocolate butter and chocolate marmalade washed down with a glass of chocolate milk. I'm very pleased with you this morning, Mrs. Midas said, as she helped John on with his coat. If you promise to eat your lunch at school as well as you eat your breakfast, I'll give you a dime to buy some chocolates with. Oh, that's all right, John said. I don't think I'll need it. Mrs. Midas looked puzzled as she waved goodbye. And that is where we will end for tonight. We'll continue tomorrow night promptly at 7.30 with Chapter 4 of The Chocolate Touch.